you know. Welcome to Camo Classroom. I'm your host, Eden from Camo, and today we are covering the audio basics. Today, um, like I said, we're covering the audio basics, and part of audio basics means remembering to mute the, the tab that you have open. So that's definitely not what I was doing just now. Um, we're talking about the importance of audio quality. We're gonna talk about various mic options, how to pick the right one for you, and we're also gonna take any audio questions that you have, so drop your questions into the chat. We're gonna answer some as we go, as well as towards the end of the show. And we're also going to be playing a little game during today's live stream where we'll be asking you to be the judge. So grab your headphones, grab your questions, and let's welcome in my panel of guests. I'm joined today by Dark and Cyrus, Julie, Judy Russell, and Fei Wu. Thank you all for joining me on today's Audio 101 live stream. So let's go around the room for a quick one-line self-intros, a little bit who you are and what a little bit about your content creation background. We'll go in the order of video layout. We'll go Judy, Brandon, and then Fei. Hello, everyone. Thanks a million for having me, Eden, and lovely to meet you all here. I am Judy Russell. I'm from Ireland, and I teach businesses how to make videos primarily using their phones. I've been in the video world for about 15 years, started off in Costa Rica, actually presenting YouTube videos a long time ago, and uh, and then worked in TV and film for a while. But uh, yeah, I love showing people what they can do, the capacity of what their phones can do. but you know, the main piece of equipment that they need is a mic. So I'm delighted to talk about that today. Awesome, my name is Brandon and I'm Dark and Cyrus on all platforms. I am a streaming and content creator for tech and things like that. Microphones are kind of my jam as of late. Um, I was a teacher for over 10 years and transitioned into marketing late, like this past year. And I've uh, been doing content for about four years, teaching streamers the budget opportunities to be able to get into streaming and education uh, and also doing just broadcast media. Cool. All right. Hi, everyone. This is Fei Wu and I am Face World Media in most places. So I'm a content creator under Face World. We have a monetized YouTube channel. Uh, podcast since 2014, a documentary on Amazon. Really enjoy doing this on our own, but also helping other small businesses and creative entrepreneurs really leverage YouTube, uh, following uh, YouTube strategies, and then to drive high quality leads for their businesses. So thrilled to be here. So as you can see, this is a panel that has a lot of experience creating videos in both their content spaces as well as out in the field. Um, Judy, I was just doing the math and realized you, when you said 15 years, that means you have been working in video since 2007. I think I barely knew what YouTube was in, in 2005 <laughs> and 2007. So. Um, <gasps> Yeah, very it was so new. It was so new at that time. And this company that I worked for, they were actually based in the US originally, but they moved to Costa Rica for uh, legal purposes because it was online betting. And oh, uh, they had a okay. studio. They had a studio with three broadcast cameras, a TriCaster, which was this machine that you needed to go live on YouTube with multiple cameras. And I think that machine was like 20 grand and they had lights and they had everything. And like, I didn't know what any of this stuff was at the time, but it, like at the time, I also thought that every business had one of these rooms with the studio you know does everyone not use these now and stuff and it's only the last couple of years that i'm seeing businesses really invest in this stuff now and it's it's, it's so cool though it's, it's great to see it evolve so much yeah and just a little bit more on that note i love that it's actually just the process has become so simplified that you don't need all of the massive equipment setups and all of the light different professional lighting setups that people are able to create really awesome videos with just the phone in their hand. And I'm actually using a iPhone 12 right now. So yeah, um, 
let's get right into it. Brandon, I'm going to throw this one to you first because, like you said, you have reviewed and compared many, many mics lately. In fact, I think I saw you just post one earlier this week. So can you tell us a little bit about your driving force behind trying out all of the mics and, and comparing them for your audience? Like, what was the, like, how did you come up with, with this as sort of like a lane that you're really in right now? Yeah, so it, I didn't start doing microphones. I started teaching people how to just use equipment and being able to say, here's mainly Twitch and YouTube and other places. Here's the stuff that you need to get started. Here's how you use the program, but here's the equipment that's budget that you don't have to go buy a $400 short SM7B to be able to get into streaming, right? Um, I've released a microphone video specifically, uh, also doing kind of a, uh, it's a voice meter as a, as a program to be able to do stuff on your computer. And it just, it took off and people asked for recommendations and I released another and another and it just continued. And now companies are sending me them crazily. I have like 50 microphones is what it feels like in this room. Um, but the, the thought is test them, show them against because you have all of the ones that have already been tested with raw files, put it up and let us see it. Um, but I mean, as, as far as microphones, you know, there's things like this is a $120 mic versus a $70 mic, and they both accomplish the same goal, and that's to improve your audio. And I'm sure we'll talk about it later. You know, cost, cost comes into play for some things, um, but brand name also pushes costs sometimes a little too far. So uh, when it comes to getting in that lane, people just asked, and it became a consistent thing. You know, it, what about this mic compared to this? What about this compared to this? I have this, should I upgrade? And it just naturally went that direction. Well, as Doc Rock always says, the audience is the algorithm. So if you are getting a lot of audience questions about something, might as well lean in. Um, also, as our audience, that everyone that is tuning in today, if you have audio questions, remember that this is the best time to ask my panel of experts. Um, and I'll be monitoring the chat as we go. So you also did mention the importance of audio, and that is why sort of the main reason that we're here is to talk about just like reiterate really that audio is super important. So Faye and Judy, you guys both work with um, clients, whether that's coaching them or producing events for them. Um, Judy, I'll go to you first on this and Faye, feel free to jump in after, but like, how do you explain the importance of audio quality to a client? It depends on the audience. Um, so I do a lot of training for academics and uh, within university kind of settings and stuff. And I show them a video that I've made myself that kind of goes through a report where they tested some, a guy was speaking on stage and they tested the audience, how much the audience liked him, if they thought that his research was important and if he kind of knew what he was talking about. And they did it with good audio and they did a survey on the audience with bad audio and they with with the bad audio they actually liked the speaker less and thought that his research was less important so that always lands with that kind of group when i'm training them and then there's another video that a different person made i can't remember where he's from but he does a test and he he, he makes his video quality really bad he puts a bad video filter over him but the audio quality is perfect and he's like you can see what i'm saying you can follow the story everything's fine and then he switches it around and his audio goes like really bad and you can see people grimace like you can see people's faces like like actually painful to listen to him his video is perfect but his audio is bad and he compares it to the Blair Witch Project and he's like it's an hour and a half of really bad video but really excellent audio and then that converts the other audience groups that I might have so I always get them with one video and if I'm not sure I use both uh, to really hammer at home and I spend an awful lot of time in all of my workshops on audio for sure that's such an interesting story judy because compared to you i certainly did not come from like an audio engineering background and the first time i learned the importance of audio even over video like you mentioned is when shooting during uh my documentary hiring and working with audio engineers was such a must and there were just like these extra team member uh, for the first time seeing like the the lavalier mic and everything travels you know clip on your shirt sometimes on your bra and it's the intricacies around it. It was just so astonishing to me. And that quickly I realized just exactly what you said. It's so important for all the work we're doing. Yeah, I'm really glad, Judy, that you mentioned um, sort of like these examples that you share with people, like the one that I see sort of referenced and circulated pretty often. It might be one of the ones that 
very similar to yours or maybe the same one, but it's this one from USC in 2018 that's like titled How Audio Quality Influences Perceptions of Research and the Researcher. Um, which is actually linked in this video description. And it's basically what Judy said. They use like science talks and like YouTube conference clips and like surveyed testers with varying levels of audio quality. And basically if the audio quality was bad, people thought that the people were less credible and less, less, less likable. Um, have either of you guys run into a situation where someone didn't, like a client didn't want to put in the planning or the money towards making sure that audio quality was up to par? Yeah, it happens uh, pretty regularly, unfortunately. I I'm curious what Judy has to say as well. I think it really depends on the client. Uh, those who have kind of done well in general or, or really doesn't fully understand the difference of implementing something. And like Brandon said, some of the mics really cost well under $100 uh, until they hear the difference. What I tend to do is during our Zoom call, uh, right now I'm using uh, my Newman mic it's made in Germany. It's all kind of fancy and everything. I will turn it off and switch over to the computer sound. They go, I don't want that. You know, they used to be okay with it until they hear the difference. Yeah, Judy, what That's about you? That's How such a great idea. I love that. I think that um, it was, I think it was difficult prior to everyone moving to working online. I think then when people started working online, they started to be like, I actually can't join this call with James. His microphone is so bad, you know, <laughs> and people started to kind of recognize how important audio was. So it became less important for me to explain to them because it was kind of a natural uh, shift in consciousness of the, of the people or something. Yeah, I, I just feel like using examples is probably one of the best ways to get that point across and our friend richard zoltner asks can you drop the link for the video where they demo the good and the bad audio versus video so judy i'll probably ask you for that and we'll get that added to the show description for the audience um so now that we have reiterated the importance of audio quality, which just being honest, we've said this in every past episode of Camo Classroom, and we'll probably say in a few more moving forward, let's talk about mics. We're gonna kick off this mic segment with some rapid fire questions. Um, three seconds to think, we're gonna go around the room. Um, same order as before, video layout, we'll go Judy, Brandon, and then Faye. Um, what is the first mic that you used for content creation? The Rode Smart Love. All right. A cheap Fifine T669. It's like a $50 mic. Audio Technica 2100. All right. And mine was the blue snowball, the one that actually was shaped like a, a, a sphere. All right. Next rapid fire question What is the mic that you're using now? The Rode NTG Video Mic. This is the Shure SM7B. This is the Newman mic. All right, and the last rapid fire question, what is the next mic up on your wish list? You need to buy a mic tomorrow. Which one are you getting? Three seconds, Judy. Oh God, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. Oh, no, I'm fine with what I have right now. <laughs> All right, so Judy loves the mic that she's using so much she would get the exact same one. Brandon, what about you? I want a Rode NTG5 to poke around. Mm. Um, this is the mic I'm keeping. It was a really big investment and it's worth it because I need a no upgrade probably for another five, 10 years. Okay. Wow. And I'm using, actually, I forgot to answer the last one. I'm using a Shure SM57. I'm also not currently in the market for a mic, but actually based on some of the use cases and recommendations we asked the panel today, I might have, uh, I might have one that I might be getting soon. So we'll see. The point of this little rapid fire game is that we just named off like a zillion mics just now. And my intent behind, behind mentioning all of these is that because I feel like this is how mic shopping is these days. When you walk into Best Buy or, or Amazon, you know, there's just so many mic options out there and it can be really overwhelming. You can spend hours on research, reading, watching reviews and, and still be kind of unable to decide. But that's why we're here to sort of share our experiences and help you narrow down finding the best mic for your use case. So mic questions, drop them into the chat. Um, we're gonna start with a little bit of actual classroom 
stuff. This is called Camo Classroom. We might as well try to like teach some things. Um, I wanted to talk about some of the most commonly seen terms in mic specs. So I feel like the most commonly seen one that is sort of first, first in the First in the description is condenser or dynamic mics. Judy, can you tell us what the difference is between a condenser mic and a dynamic mic? I think when I was in college, so when I came back from Costa Rica, I went to uh, college to study video and uh, I loved the audio stuff. And I remember our lecturer was saying like a condenser mic is like a, a sensitive listener you know, that can capture very detailed sounds. And then a dynamic mic is like the, the workhorse that you can kind of um, like handle the high pressure levels and stuff. So like, I suppose they work in different ways. The The dynamic one uses a wire coil in the in the diaphragm and then the condenser, it, it vibrates in response to the sound waves. So they've, they've got different ways of using it. But like, I find like my go-to is always the condenser microphones. I just find that they do, everything that I need the microphone to do. Like I use a lot of different mics, um, especially I kind of stuck with Rode. Um, so I use a lot of the Rode wireless goes, the smart lav, the NTGs. Um, like maybe I'm, I'm a bit gone a bit brandy, but I, I kind of I just know them and I kind of like, you know, when you get used to something like if you're Apple, it's very hard to move to Android. It's, it's just that kind of way. I don't know if they're actually any better. That's why I think I should watch more of Brandon's videos for the actual comparison to listen. But I do think that the condenser mics kind of are the my go to kind of friends. But I'd love to hear your take on that as well, guys. Brandon, do you have anything to share on condenser versus dynamic? I know you've <laughs> you've tried out all of them. I've, I've seen your YouTube page. <laughs> yeah, it's condenser versus dynamic is a conversation that it depends on. I think the conversation really is what you what are you trying to accomplish? If you're trying to do a bunch of sound rejection, we're going to talk about um, polar patterns later. But when you're talking about sound rejection, um, dynamic microphones lend themselves more because they need that active part to actually activate the diaphragm. Whereas condenser microphones are, are usually powered, either have phantom power, which is 48 volts passed over the line, or have some sort of like your lav, that Rode wireless, it's a powered mic, you know, and it activates that coil to be able to pick up the sound. It's a little more sensitive. It's a little bit more real to world sound rather than it's, this is a, not manufactured, but I have a little bit more control of my sound in a space. So when it comes to um, like a, a room that's not treated, um, I usually push people more towards a dynamic microphone, uh, but making sure they, they pick a dynamic microphone of quality. Um, but as far as things like vlogging on the go, condenser mics, being able to pick up natural sounds around you, that's usually what I push people for. We're definitely going to get into sort of different mics being better fits for different use cases. Um, but I'm curious if we go around the room is I know mine is a dynamic mic. Judy is your you said you'd lean towards condenser. Is yours a condenser mic right now? It is, but I also, like, this is a dual purpose mic, so I use this on the top of my camera as well when I'm out, and then I use it when I'm in. So I actually go back to my last question where you were like, what kind of mic do you want? I'm going to take one of Brandon's recommendations for a dynamic mic and try it out in this room and uh, and see if I like the, the sound of it. I think that's great. And Brandon, what's, are you using a dynamic or a condenser mic right now? This is a dynamic mic. And Faye, what about yours? Also dynamic. Also dynamic. All right. Yeah. And Brandon, I appreciate that you brought up sound treating and, and sort of environments because I think that's actually why I was recommended a dynamic microphone. I don't have any like foam panels or, or any, um, I don't have my room soundproofed in any way, shape or form, but because I didn't want to, to do that, I thought I might be better off with a dynamic mic. So have e any of you guys sound treated a room before? Oh, yeah. oh, Brandon's nodding. All right. Can you tell us a little about a bit about that process and just sort of like the cliff notes of how someone would go about soundproofing a room? Yeah, sure. Um, I uh, for 10 years, I was a I was a high school music teacher and I have a I have a mu music degree. So oh. soundproofing my classroom actually was one of my first things that I did. Um, I came into basically just a tile box. So um, even tile on the ground, make sure you're making sure if you're going to soundproof, uh, every time you have a flat wall that's parallel to another wall, it's an opportunity to reverb and bounce sound. 
So putting something that stops that, whether it be a piece of cloth, a piece of foam, uh, even thinking about your floor, if you have tile or hardwood, putting down a rug, just having things in the room to stop the bounces will keep that reverberation and that noise floor low. I have some panels, these are just decorative, but they do actually have stuff. They're maybe like a quarter of an inch thick, but uh, I have some here and over there and I have carpet as well as just some uh, like t-shirts and stuff that are decorative, but they serve the purpose of stopping that sound from bouncing. And that helps lower that noise floor. I, I love that you brought up sort of, you know, just that you can even throw up a towel or a t-shirt and that will help with the, it would give the sound less things to bounce off of. And a f friend of the show, Brusco says he's, he got, he's got the carton of eggs set up. Yo, it's, it's, it's better than nothing. It's better than nothing. <laughs> And uh, even I just want to add that for anybody with a, a small closet or like a walk in closet, I never realized how powerful that is. And I would try to record it in my own walk in closet. I actually did the intro of my documentary in my producer's wife's walk in closet. And it was phenomenal. So um, that's my take. <laughs> yeah, I love that. That reminds me, uh, Jungkook of BTS used to do record his videos in the closet because it gave the best sound quality. Um, I know our friend Doc Rock from Ecamm also likes to recommend like if you have one of those smaller bathrooms, a half bathroom maybe, that because it's such a small space um, that you can even get started when you just can find a small enclosed space with not a lot of echo. Also, uh, the Dan Lebetard show with Stu Gotts, one of their producers says that he always goes into his car to record ad hits because the audio quality and that you can get from just your standard Apple default iPhone uh, headphones that comes with the the iPhone. If you are right on the mic, it will actually give you like pretty good sound quality. I have a bit of a funny story about that is my producer for the podcast I used to be on. Um, once I was traveling and had to record using the default Apple headphone mics. And he was like, oh, did you get a new mic? Because you sounded so good today. And I was like, no, I was actually using the cheap headphones that came free with the iPhone because I forgot to bring my mic on, on the road. But because I was talking right into the mic and I was in actually like a smaller room space when recording it, no one could tell that I wasn't using my usual mic setup. So just a little, uh, little, little. I, I went mad one time and went like and bought all of these um, foamy things from Amazon and then bought a white background and then I bought spray glue and then I put them on and then I got fed up with it after the first one. So I just have like a whole thing of these and I shouldn't have got white either. I should have got like cooler colors, but I did actually surround the whole room in them. But then everything was just covered in glue and I was like, I actually... <laughs> could have, have a better way. But what I usually do, and I forgot before I started this, is I kind of stick these up around me when I'm doing voiceovers as well, just to give an extra bit of kind of dampening and uh, so that the, and it definitely makes a, a massive improvement. It's just a kind of, I know, look aesthetic versus audio. And I should be leaning towards audio, but sometimes you just have to kind of compromise um, between the two. I think I that's, it. yeah, that's a really good point is sometimes it just depends on how you want to look versus how you want to sound. Sometimes there are trade-offs that have to be made. Faye? Yeah. Yeah, I was just so jealous looking at Judy pulling out like a, a piece. So this thing I still haven't quite figured out how to use, but it looked really cool. Uh, what and, is that? You know, so this is a sound absorber panel. Oh, so it, okay. Imagine, I know Brandon probably knows exactly what it is, but you put it on tripod, you basically kind of stick your face in there and you sing into the mic that's sitting here. And it's in incredible, I think, without having to build or revamp your entire office. So, I mean, they're sold. I think this is kind of a known brand, but there are many alternatives, you know, versions on Amazon for sure. Wow, very yeah, that, cool. That, that voiceover box you have is, is amazing. A lot of people take, um, if you ever get a box from Amazon that's 12 by 12, grab the panels that Judy had and then glue them on the inside of the box, poke a hole in the back of the box to run your cable into your microphone. That is a really budget way to do voiceover work or voice acting work. And you just pull the box close to you and speak in it and it just fold the box, put it away. Really it works. Cool. Oh. It works. I'm a big fan of, of homemade DIY um, <laughs> solutions, especially ones that you can like shove in the corner later. I live in Brooklyn, not a lot of storage space. So 
it's yeah I'm I'm a big fan of that yeah Briscoe says it looks like a space helmet it's definitely I I did not know what it was when you busted that out Faye but it looks very cool <laughs> yeah indeed all right so getting back into sort of microphone terms um the next one that I feel like I see a lot thrown around in audio conversations, I'm always hearing like USB mic versus XLR mic. Some mics have, have both options. Um, wh what is the difference between an XLR mic and a USB mic? And what are the pros and cons of each? Brandon, I'll go to you on this one. Yeah, sure. So going on the road piece for Judy, um, like Rode just released, uh, this is the pod mic, which I have the original one over here actually on a stand right but they released a usb version of this that also has xlr right oh okay. and so um so what you do is xlr obviously has to be powered by an interface uh and so like this is a cheap 50 dollar interface from fifine it just takes xlr converts it to a digital signal so your computer can use um but usb does that on board so it usually has a chip or something built in some of these microphones usually have like a built-in mute button uh, most of the time they have a headphone plug so you can actually monitor your audio direct from device with no latency and your computer also can use it as an output so it'll also send your computer audio back through the microphone as well through the headphone port rather um, it usually gives you a lot more customization however you do lose some quality because it is trying to do all of the processing on the mic uh, and not through like a, a more powered digital interface most of the microphones i've reviewed lately um, like the K688 from Fifine, it does XLR and USB as well. You can use both at the same time. And so that means that you could be doing a podcast while also running the USB out to your phone on TikTok as well, using the same mic doing both. And so some mics have a really good opportunity to make multiple pieces of content at the same time. The Rode one, I just reviewed it, doesn't do that, by the way. So don't buy it if you think it's going to do both. It only does one or the other. Um, but it, it gives creators more options and that same case it removes the need of buying another interface and another point of failure if you're just trying to create content sometimes it's just about the piece of the equipment rather than the setup of everything yeah our friend she song victor says that the mv7 on usb works great um and he's been testing with the roadcaster duo and he still likes it better on on usb um all right so since we've been doing this for the other mic terms. Let's go around the room. Judy, are you using XLR or USB? All USB now. All USB now. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Or TRSS or T or or S or one of the other. Yeah, but I have no USB, and I actually I don't miss them to be honest. Like I, what I appreciated them for was the length. If you were to go to the back of the room and you needed to run the audio like oh, twenty yeah. meters, I don't think <laughs> you can actually get that with USB. So like you know it was great for that, but like then the XLR cable would break, and then it's like a really expensive replacement as well. And I used to have to get them from Thoman in Germany, and it was oh. it was just a big deal for a cable, you know. But like my whole um approach to video has changed because I used to make TV. So I used to have a large camera and an exp a much more expensive microphone and a much more expensive tripod. So I had a whole like, I suppose, like epiphany with mobile. And I was like, OK, I'm going to run. I'm going to go everything mobile. So I sold everything and went. I, I tried to find the simplest way to do everything. And I, I still try to do that today. So I definitely don't miss the USB and I don't now I think like I think Brandon has a bit much better ear than I do, but like I don't miss the 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 quality and I'm not sure if it's even if USB is designed to have better quality, but like I don't notice the difference. Maybe I should be, but I, I definitely don't anymore. I know Brandon's latest video, he does a comparison where I think you're switching between the two, right, Brandon? Um, so it's, yeah, it's yeah. that definitely check that one out. Um, actually, Brandon, could you tell us a little bit about your how you compare mics and and sort of like your comparison process? Because I've just, you know, I've, I've been following a lot of your videos and you've kind of sort of fallen into a, a like really like standardized system for how you compare mics now. Could you just share a little bit about how you came up with that process and what it is for our, our viewers that don't know yet? Yeah, sure. I want to speak to Judy's point first. Thinking specifically, I love the fact that you went all mobile and just pulled everything down. Telling creators, first of all, if, if it's going to make your life more difficult, there's no reason to use it. 
especially if you're trying to create content as a business owner who's already trying to run a business and fake it speak to that. If you're putting an obstacle in the way, remove the obstacle. And USB does that in a lot of ways. And in that same case, no, you technically, it's a really small difference between the two, um, but usually compression on platforms kill the difference anyway, so you can't even tell the difference. Um, so speaking to that, me looking at my process, like I run through, I have a four channel mixer as well as an XLR interface on my main rig. All of this is connected. But what I do is I plug into three or four different interfaces to make sure that gain wise things work. Um, the SM7B is probably one of the hardest mics to push dynamic wise for under a thousand dollars. There's usually some more testy ones above, but I will take this microphone and see if interfaces will be able to power it. But as far as any of the other ones, I try to gain match them to negative eight decibels, which is usually where I aim my noise floor for video. Faye, you can probably speak a lot better to this. Um, but I usually run about negative eight for my noise floor. And um, if I can figure out what that decibel is, I'll tell people what that is. Because certain interfaces can't push that amount of gain without going too far and clipping and making some damage to the sound. So what I, what I do is I usually will take all of my microphones, do a test, record them all in a raw point, and then each video as I get a new one, will play snippets of that original raw recording so that people can see, oh, here's a new mic, here's all the other options with prices, which one should you choose? Nice. Yeah, thanks for sharing. No, I just really appreciate just that you've really thought about sort of everything. And you know, you also do the tests where sometimes you're a little bit further from the mic versus like right up close. And it's like, I just think that's so valuable for people that are mic shopping because often it depends on how they are planning to use it. Also, just a little fun question and that I like to pitch for creators, but as I can see, we all have our mics in the shot. Do we have strong feelings about whether the mic is in shot or out of shot? Because I know some people that feel very strongly about this. One or one of these people may or may not be Aiden Fitzpatrick who may or may not be watching, but um, yeah, I was just curious, do you guys have, have strong preferences or have you had clients that have said that they really don't like the mic in the shot? It's, it's always I've never question. had the mic in the shot before. Sorry, go ahead, Faye, you go first. <laughs> oh no, sorry. The, um, yeah, it, it's usually, I think it's really sexy and it just shows to the world that you're a creator and then you're putting in this effort and usually most of the mics are quite beautiful. I just. I find them beautifully built. Um, with that said, when I do my YouTube videos, for instance, I do have a lot of rope mics that are just mounted there or the go mics that are clipped on my shirt. So it's not even noticeable. So I think both works. Um, but yeah, it, it's, I don't think it's a decision that should hold people back from creating their content. Yeah, Afterburn85 yeah, I, I, says in shot. So Judy, I, what I never have my mic in shot. I literally did it today because I was like, I'm with loads of uh, content creators, so I better put it in. I usually have it like just above here. Oh, I'm after totally breaking it. I'm going to have to mute myself and fix that. But I, I usually just have it above here and out of shot because I suppose that's how I was raised in the video world. It's like you never see the mic, you know, that kind of way. So I'm like, but I do love, like you've got cooler looking mics than I have. Like this is an onboard camera mic that I'm using in a studio setting. You've got way cooler setups that I do. So I, I'm with it for year mics, but I, I would usually keep mine out of shot. I'll just mute myself there for a second to fix this. No problem. I think, Judy, I think that microphone is fantastic in shot. I think that says, hi, I'm even more of a creator because I just pulled it off the camera and plugged it in. Here I'm going. I think that says even more purpose to the video creator. Um, I think uh, from my perspective, I work with a lot of streamers and creators. Uh, I think having it in shot, from my perspective, from a streamer, they like to show off their gear, like my computer's here, my totally. all this, blah, yeah. blah, blah. And I think it gives the the sense of um, you've made it. I don't know how I'm trying to say that. Like, uh, and I don't really know how to say it. Like brand, you're branding yourself kind of a deal. But in that same case, it gives um, brands opportunity to say, you know, if you're normally having it in, they can reach out to you and say, hey, use this mic. I'll sponsor you to use this mic, et cetera. It gives more opportunity for brands to be a part of you. Um, but I'm also of the field of the closer the mic is to your the sound source, the better the sound yeah. is. Yes. And so I, I um, the, the real estate office I work at, she hates to have a mic on her. Um, and so very often I will actually take a road wireless go and stick it in her pocket and then run a lab up her shirt and she'll either pin it or we'll tape it behind the shirt. So, and the big part of that is just because 
I like it in shot doesn't mean that other people don't find it annoying or distracting to stay in front of it or you're chasing the client. So I think when it comes to sound, the best choice is the closest to the person as you can get. But from video work, it's the best option that tells the story you're trying to tell. You're trying to tell. Yeah, I love that Victor said that he knows of a lot of people that don't want the mic in the shot. I just, I, I grew up, I mean, I grew up, I came up in the content creation doing podcasting and the thing that my producer was always telling me was Eden, get closer to the mic, get closer to the mic. He could always tell when I was drifting or getting a little bit ADD and like moving around. He was always like, Eden, I need you to talk right into the mic. So I am also team get, get that mic right, right in front of your face where it, you, it is guaranteed to, to, to catch sound. And yeah, after Burn says it depends on how animated you are. I I am very animated a lot, but I li I like to move around, so it's like, you know, I I probably need to get a boom arm so I can have it follow me a little bit better. But but yeah, it's. Um, Anita, I was also thinking because Judy, both Judy and Brandon are such professionals, they they have a you know a, a lot of awareness around how they move and operate around the mic. For regular creators who are new to this, they may not have that. Therefore, I think it's it's probably be better just have it, like you said, as close uh, as you can be um, towards a mic. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate 100%. that face since my whole set of just fell apart to me. So <laughs> I'll, I'll take that. Thank you. <laughs> the real world. I think that I think that lends itself even to that same point. You know, uh, I think phase. Judy's is a different polar pattern, and then your pattern matches ours. You know, when we're talking about that, you know. We have, you know, cardioid polar patterns and, you know, depending on if you're super cardioid or whatever, you know, some creators like this microphone has an omnidirectional option on it, you know, and talking about in that case, you could just give them a microphone. It doesn't matter how animated they are. It's the same sound all the way around, kind of like that road wireless go, you know, mics are designed for different types of content. And thank you for bringing up polar patterns, I don't have to, you know, worry about a transition. You just, you just introduced it. Um, I, so just the ones that you named omnidirectional and cardioid, I believe is, is how it's said. I feel like those are the main two that you see in, in mics, especially when it comes to people shopping for content creation or video conferencing. Um, you touched on it a little bit, but could you just give us sort of like, again, what does cardioid mean? Omnidirectional a bit, a bit uh, self-explanatory, but but what is cardioid and and why why is that usually the polar pattern for for talking into talking heads that are talking into a mic sentences? Got it. Love it. It was great. Was, you did a great job. <laughs> um, okay, so polar patterns. Um, omnidirectional obviously is anything around. That's like your lavalier mics, your Rode Wireless goes. Um, a lot of on-camera mics. Uh, some of them have an omnidirectional option. But as far as uh, microphones like what we have, they're cardioid. That means that they have this bubble of sound and kind of sensitivity where the best sensitivity is directly in front of the sensor. Um, like if I pull this off, the sensor's right here for this microphone speaking directly into the sensor uh, where the diaphragm is the term, um, speaking directly into it is the best, it's like the zero part of the sensitivity, right? But as I wrap around the microphone, like if I went, behind the microphone, there's a lot of difference. The rejection Big happens. Difference. There's not as much sensitivity there. And as I go to the side, it's even less sound, but you can still hear it compared to when I come around to the top of the mic. And so when it comes to microphones like what Judy has, um, some of them are su super cardioid. Some of them are, you know, even more defined of that bubble. And so cardioid just means that there's a rejection area. You also have bi-directional which um, I have a Joby mic that it's basically, it's a podcast mic you put in between the two people. That's and it right. has a cardioid pattern one direction, full rejection on the sides, and then a cardioid on the other side so that you can sit across the table from each other and you still don't get the sound from the sides, but you get full sound from both parties. Some of them even split left and right for you to be able to do audio. So it's looking at the terms when you're finding a microphone, a lot of the ones that we just showed you are cardioid. Um, and are meant for this to where if I'm typing on a keyboard, you're not hearing that sound. You're hearing it from the source. That's right. And I don't know if that was an, another intentional transition point, but 
I promised you guys a little bit of a game show at the beginning of the stream. Now is, you know, I thought since we've been talking a little bit about different mics for different use cases, Brandon just talked about which polar patterns make sense for various use cases also. I thought we would ask the audience, you guys, to help us decide who has the best mic for ASMR. So I've asked the panel to prepare a few sound effects that we'll each take turns presenting to the audience, and then we'll let you guys just vote in the comments which mic picked up the sound best. And also, I will allow for slight mic repositioning if you feel like it will help your cause a little bit. Keyboard typing is one of them, but we're going to start with paper sounds because that's the first one that I have written down on my lineup. And so I'll go first to demo, and then we'll go in order of video layout, Judy, Brandon, and then Faye. So paper, tearing. I'm going to do two tears, and then we'll crinkle it. So. All right, Judy, over to you. Nice. All right, Brandon. I feel like I want to do mine slowly. I won't. Oh, nice. All right. So while the votes are, are rolling in, I will say I think I personally like Judy's the best out of out of the, the tearing and the crinkling. I don't know if it's because it's condenser and, and picks up everything a little bit, but I felt the crinkling really, really delivered a little bit more in Judy's. What about you guys? Did you guys have which one did you guys think? I kind of like Eden's. It was like really pops and where we position the sound, I realized that we have a pop filter. Well, I do. And what about you guys? I, I like Judy's and it's just because of that condenser, that, that crisp, yeah. clean bite. I liked it. But see, I didn't want to just do this segment for fun. It was also to sort of demonstrate different mics for different use cases. And also Dancing Brave says Faye, Faye wins that round. Um, and Lucas says it's a tie between Brandon and Faye. All right, so while the votes are rolling in, the next sound is, is whisper, whispering. So I'll go first. Uh, please, please shoot for a five to seven second whisper sample. For the first pick of the 2023 NBA draft, the San Antonio Spurs select Victor Wembanyama of the Metropolitan 92 from Lation. All right, Judy. You are what you eat, so avoid eating nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe to Dark and Cyrus. Hey, it's Faye from. I don't know how to whisper. Sorry, I'm practicing. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, guys. This is Faye from Face World Media. Thank you so much for being here. I know, actually, as I was like whispering, I was like, it's been such a long time since I've actually whispered that I don't know if I'm doing this right. I just hope the mic picked it up. So if you guys could tell us in the comments wh whose mic picked up whispering the best, we'd, we'd love to know because apparently we're all a little bit out of practice when it comes to whispering. Um, <laughs> Scan Matrix says, says Judy win wins that round, I think. So, and Richard, oh, thanks, Richard. We all have good audio, appreciate you. Um, and then, all right, the last ASMR sound effect that we have prepared is keyboard sounds. I am going to point my mic towards, towards my keyboard a little bit. So, and I'm just going to type some sentences. <laughs> all right, Judy, over to you. Sorry. Brandon? Uh, 
<laughs> uh, I love the uh, enter at the end. All right, and Faye? My, uh, I have a very quiet keyboard. Sorry, guys. Oh, it's all good. <laughs> We're doing the best we can. Well, I will also say me and Brandon have mechanical keyboards, so maybe also that, that helped ours a little bit. Um, but yeah, so, so let us know who we thought overall. So I know we had a few votes here and there for each individual one, but also now asking for overall for the different sounds that we tested, who had, who had the best overall for overall best mic for, for various sound effects. <laughs> um, all right, so. As we get in, as uh, we let votes trickle in, let's get into some recommendation for use cases. S we just talked about all the different types of mics out there, different polar patterns, condenser, dynamic, which use cases for what. Um, Faye, I'll go to you first on this one. If a client comes to you and says, I wanna upgrade my entire team to have better sound on video calls, what mic are you recommending for the team upgrade? Yeah, uh, for the price consideration, uh, you know, I would say I probably, I think Audio Technica or even Yeti. Yeti just looks cool. I know it's not the greatest mic, but it has so many different uses with polar patterns all built in. So those probably going to be the two. All right, and actually that reminds me, there was a question from Brusco earlier that asked if there was a mic that does both. Um, I think that was in response to polar patterns so i think we actually recently just put out an audio guide where our in-house writer lucas c who's also chiming in on on the votes and he says brandon you have the best keyboard sound um where he talks about the uh, the blue yeti and having the different settings that can work for various use cases so that's i'm just i guess it's glad good to get a, a sense check on that all right and judy if you are doing quick interview hits, say like in the hallway or a conference, you're shooting with your phone, what is your recommended mic setup for you and like a quickly rotating guest? Oh, okay, I have to say that I will go then for the Rode Wireless Go 2, where you can, so like, I love what I love about this is the like, dynamic dynamism. I've used that word a couple of times this week and I, I need to Google to make sure it's correct. But uh, you can plug the Rode SmartLav into this mic or it has a mic on top built into it. But what I love is you can buy this 30 euro adapter then nice. that goes, that puts the mic on top and then you can put your, yeah, yeah, Brandon, good man. And what I've done is I have blacked out the Rode, sorry, Rode, but like, <laughs> you know, with, with just a black marker. And then I go and I buy these flags from Amazon where I can then, the, I go back to my glue station, by the way, and uh, and I print off um, with kind of sticky paper the branding of the client that I'm filming for. Awesome. I'll put that on the four sides and then I can just stick it in people's faces and it's a branded mic kind of in their face and it works really well. And it, do you know why it works so well, though? Uh, I think we've all mentioned this today. You can really stick it next to the person's mouth, especially in a conference room or something like that, and pick up that really, really good audio. And then I will do a little bit of fixing it in post then. But I think you're going to talk about that um, a little bit later as well. Yeah. Yeah. And I do have some see some questions rolling in. We are going to get to questions towards the end of the show. Um, also, am I the only one that doesn't have a Rode Wireless Go? Because I think I saw Brandon Brandon show his and Faye also yeah. show hers. Faye, is that what you use when you're doing interviews backstage at Cirque du Soleil? Yeah, I absolutely love using these. So high quality, but these things are so small. Can we talk about how not to lose these things? I already <laughs> lost a <the> receiver. <laughs> <laughs> They're actually uh, the one thing that I do want in the audio. Oh, sorry, Brendan. Uh, the one thing I do want in the audio thing is that they're just after coming out with a housing for this fate that you can put the three of these into and they'll charge within their casing. So then, because my current housing for these is a bag that says Road Wireless Go and all of the different stuff goes in there, but it's the only way I can keep my kids organized. It's so crazy. When I bought this a few years ago, this is literally the little pouch with a yeah. Velcro. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're um yeah, it's like 50 bucks for a box that you can stick them in and it charges one thing at a time. They're great. Yeah, wireless goes are great, but the other part that's why it's so good, you can stick this up but on the wireless go too you can do a safety channel. So even if they scream into the mic and you can set it up, there's another channel that will record 20 decibels lower. So you'd be like, "Oh, okay, okay, scream into the mic, that's fine. I got you though. That's fine." 
Nice. That's why it's so good. Uh, Victor says all the cool kids have Rode Wireless Go's, and that's plus him. So I am. I actually think that might be my next mic purchase because I think I'll be doing some content on the go and at, at conferences coming up the rest of this year. And you guys have just just talked me talked me into this. I think. All right, Brandon. So someone wants to get started with game streaming. What are you recommending for their mic setup? I think it it has to come down to price. Um, but I always want to recommend a USB mic to start because it's so easy to plug in. You can always upgrade it. Um, this K688 microphone uh, is like 80 bucks. Um, XLR USB, mute button on the top. It looks like a Shure SM7B, which is what everyone wants in the streaming space. But I've made probably four or five videos where I defend that this sounds almost as good as this microphone on XLR and close to it on USB because it's that good. So for $70, you can get a $400 plus a interface sound. It's it's a no brainer. Nice. Yeah, y'all y'all really have to check out Brandon's mic reviews there. They, he does a really good job just like sound testing and anyone that is, is doing mic shopping, check check Brandon's channel first. And um, best overall mic was Brandon's also. So it sounds like Oh, Victor also says all around win. He'll say Brandon. Brandon, it sounds like you are winning the ASMR competition. Um, mm -hmm. All right. So right before Thank we you. get <laughs> into our, our Q&A segment, I did want to talk about some software, audio software options that can help you with sound quality. Um, so Faye, I actually reached out to you because I just noticed in one of your videos that you were doing that you were using Crisp. And I've heard about Crisp from Lorraine Lee on the past episode, um, as well as from one of our uh, community members, Richard Zoltner actually mentioned Crisp and Isotope to me. Could you share with us what Crisp is, what does it do and how you use it? Absolutely. So you can use Crisp in pretty much any situation, especially for things like you know Zoom, Google Meetings, where there could be a lot of things happening in your home, in your background. And I couldn't believe how good it was. Uh, my content manager showed it to me. She is like a world traveler, literally with Crisp installed and turned on. And yes, you can actually use it for free. Uh, I believe you know you have the free plan is daily up to 60 minutes. Once it's turned on, you could be clapping. You could have a loud Spotify playing in the background. The other person cannot hear anything at all. I think it's truly a, a miracle. One of the things I couldn't believe we, we did this uh, when I uh, interviewed Steve Wozniak, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, and he was somehow in this ace in this room with this huge fan, and we're about to like bust open the the Zoom webinar in front of like five thousand people, and he installed Crisp right then and there, and it completely removed the background sound. It was such a risk too. So yeah, I, I think it's fantastic. That's awesome. Wow, that is always dicey to do live live software demos without without any testing. Um, so if you're looking for live noise cancellation, definitely check out Crisp. I live in Brooklyn. I probably need to get it because I never know when a fire truck is going to go past my window. It just it just could happen at any time. Um, all right, Judy. In our pre-show email, you mentioned testing out the new Adobe Enhance tool. So is this this one is used for post, right? Can you tell us about I your can't. experience with it? I can't not use it. Like I, ca I can't not use it for anything now. Like even if I'm capturing good sound and it sounds nice and the mic is good and everything like that, I'm still running it through this software because it's so amazing. And um, it will just, you know, I think it's podcast.adobe.com forward slash enhance. Um, probably the only website I know off by heart because I'm just using it so much. But um, you need to upload a WAV or an MP3 file less than an hour. And uh, and also if you have, this is something that I've realized, right, that everyone might know, but I just did not know it. I was taking my video file, bringing it into Premiere Pro, exporting it as a WAV, and then bringing that into the podcast app. Um, what I realized is if you just change the file extension from MP4 or to .wav, it will just change it into an audio file. So that's after saving me a lot of time. Um, I'm really happy to found that. So then I just literally duplicate the file, throw it in there, uh, export it out, and then just bring it in and sync it. It's obviously the same length, um, and it's the easiest thing to do. 
do and it makes the audio it's just it's, it's mind-blowingly good and I, I can't get over it because you know all of you like especially you Brandon you've probably always told your students don't fix it in post because you can't fix audio in post you know I've tried denoise filters I've tried audition I've tr- like trying to learn patterns of sounds and then remove those sounds I've tried so many different audio things and most of the time it just makes it worse but this actually makes a massive difference in the quality and i'd be delighted to hear if you've used it what do you think about it so far uh adobe podcast is fantastic let me just before we even say anything else if you're a person who does anything video and you're editing in post it's wonderful um my editor at the time and he's actually my assistant now um he also uses adobe podcast he used to use it for me and i actually asked him to stop um, not because I was trying to torture him, but because sometimes if you listen very carefully, if there's anything soft, it will adjust the pitch of the audio. So you have to be, I would say Adobe podcast is fantastic. If, if there's enough volume there and there's not too much distraction, cause it will pitch correct for some reason. Um, mm. but, uh, I literally, I videoed a guy on a real estate thing in front of a uh, like a sign out in front of a neighborhood, there's a dog like 10 feet away barking his head off and I used Adobe AI and you would have never known ever. But I also in post will mix the original audio with Adobe AI right. to get some of the presence of the room back in. It's maybe like 15 decibels lower, but just to get that back in. And also if I'm missing some of that pitch stuff, it kind of helps um, kind of bring that around. But as, as far as a program that I recommend, uh, when you're thinking about fixing audio, you like Faye has uh, Crisp, which is amazing. If you own uh, a laptop with an NVIDIA card, um, anything like that with a graphics card, it, you can use um, NVIDIA Broadcast, which they the video that they promoted it with was a guy had a, uh, a what is it? You blow leaves out your leaf blower. Oh my gosh. How did I get that? A leaf blower blowing it into the microphone with him speaking and wow. it was crisp and clear because it was AI flipping it just like crisp. I just think it's a little bit more in tune, mm-hmm. um, but that's kind of locked behind having Brilliant. that card. Whereas crisp was locked behind a purchase. So um, other parts that I would look at is if you're trying to reroute your audio voice meter is a very powerful um, tool on your computer, if you have a Windows computer, uh, to be able to actually reroute all of your audio and be able to have individual control of applications of audio. It's free and it's really easy to use after you set it up. And what, that was called voice meter? It's just, that's what voice it's called? Voice meter. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's, there's three different options. There's like regular, then there's banana and potato. Potato is their paid version, but banana is, uh, you can basically run virtual ins and outs for microphones. Um, and then also a lot of other platforms give their own audio cool. interface. Rode actually just released Rode Connect, uh, which does something very similar to this. If you have a Rode Wireless Go or I like this Rode Pod mic, you can connect it and get virtual audio channels so that when you're doing a podcast like this, you can say, oh, someone's too loud. You have control over their audio coming in and you get granular control of what they're doing on a live setting. Oh, nice. I That's... just saw that today. I'm so glad you explained that to me. I was literally in there and I was like, what's the virtual part? And it's coming up as an option now as well. When I select my audio, do you want that? And I'm like, what does that? But like, cause I use Rode Connect all the time and just purely for the ability to add applause effects every now and then, uh, especially if my uh, room goes dead. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. And it, People use it to split out their music. Um, if they have some other kind of uh, something from a browser, a source, or a sound, or, or whatever the case, it's just more granular control, and it comes with the platform, right? So, and as far as Adobe goes, I'm, I'm reading chat as it goes. DJI mics were mentioned earlier. Rode yeah. and DJI are almost interchangeable. DJI are just a little smaller. They're more expensive, but they have the same options. Yeah, those are actually the two that I am. Um, picking between it's which which is the dji popular one that it, what's it called um it's a two i don't know if i'm gonna pull it up that quick but it's okay. uh it's like 329 dollars for two receivers or two transmitters one receiver yeah. it's the same thing safety channel still plug it in usb the only difference and the only benefit to a dji mic for a wireless lav is it records 
um, eight hours onto the actual device right. so you can yeah. use it as a piece. But with the road stuff, you have to use the road software to pull it off. With the DJI, it's just like a memory card. You can plug in whatever computer and just pull it off immediately. You don't have to go through that software. Oh no, those are the two that I'm in between. I have no idea which one I'm gonna get. I know Judy is very, very pro road, so <laughs> she's she's definitely influenced um, some of my buying decisions. Victor says that he likes Road Connect and he's been playing with it for a while. Um, okay, let's, oh, Brandon, one last question that I wanted to throw to you. I know you touched on it a little bit, but because I know that you've tested out a lot of mics that come with software, do you, are, were there any mics that with software that you feel like were like standouts as far as software goes that just had like really robust features that just made the mic just sort of much more complete as a package? Yes, 100%. Elgato is owned by Corsair. They're both gaming brands, whatever the case. They have microphones called the Wave microphones. They have the Wave 3 and the Wave 1. Um, if you get an Elgato Wave microphone, you get Elgato's Wavelink software, which is hands down, it's what I use every day. It's what I'm routing all of my audio through. Um, the Wavelink software allows you to connect each application in your computer to a separate audio channel to get full gr like granular control and to get a master mix down to be able to almost, it's almost like having a virtual mixer on your computer, but it's included with the microphone. So that Wave 3 is nice. like $130. It comes with the microphone. Um, but you can also get their Stream Deck Plus to get the, the software as well and use it with any microphone. So you're not tied to only having to use that Wave microphone. But if you were doing one purchase and done, the Elgato Wave 3, it's a condenser microphone. So you can use it like six to 12 inches away. Um, but obviously the better, closer you get, the better it's going to be. All right, um, let's get to a few questions. There's just a couple that I really wanna hit. I know we are a little bit close to time, but Dan asks, aside from Brandon, are the rest of us using headphones or in-ear buds? And yes, I am using Sure in-ear monitors, uh, the SE. 215s that just came out in purple last fall. So that's the ones that I'm using. Um, what are, what are, what is everyone else using for, for listening? I'm not using anything. Whoops. <laughs> what are you, Judy? Neither am I. I, I was, I remembered like, cause I, I remember I saw someone write that they don't like the look of headphones and, and neither do I. And also I'm totally deaf in one ear. So I have only one ear to go at. So when I put in my AirPod or whatever, I, I feel like, oh, I'm in this weird bubble and I, I can't like, I can't really cope with it. So I remember going live on Ecamm once and uh, I couldn't, I had to plug in headphones and I was like, okay, yeah. what's the story here? But on mostly everything else, it's not causing any kind of reverb to other people or any echo in other people's shots and I thought I'm not I'm, I think it's the technology is it that's just kind of who, who, who might know about this because I think it's just a, an, a brilliant thing that I'm really lucky that it's, it's after I, happening. And I thought that. you guys were just wearing like clear ones or ones where <laughs> I couldn't tell because I'm not getting any feedback from you guys when I was doing an interview last week my guest did not have headphones and I I had to ask him to go get headphones because I kept hearing him back so I mean I'm glad we didn't run into it but I guess uh I guess I guess there are people in here that are flagrant about not using headphones. Um, I'm, I'm team headphones though, because I just, uh, I, I also, if, if I had it my way, I would be wearing the headphones that similar to what Brandon is wearing, but, um, but I, I, I've been told it's a cleaner look without the can headphones. So it's, it's what I'm, what I'm going for. <laughs> yeah. I see I, a, I was a musician. Uh, sorry, Faye, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. No, Brandon, you go ahead. I was a musician for years. I have like three or four sets of in-ear monitors. I love in-ear monitors. Uh, I, the only reason I use, these are the Arctis Pro Wireless. Um, they have line in and line out three and a half and everything in my room, not only everything from my like couch station that's over here, every piece of equipment is connected to this headphone. I can hear everything with only one piece and be able to hear whatever the case it doesn't matter so the only reason i use headphones is because everything's run into one thing and i don't have to worry about it but as far as you not being able to hear anything chrome naturally has sound rejection built into any kind of video oh, um stuff okay. so if you're capturing into chrome it automatically is doing that and and then uh that's just a natural piece of broadcast equipment right now ah oh, that is great to know all right we got one more question um from caleb 
Caleb Landmesser, a friend of the show, he asked for a specific budget model of a microphone that anyone read, read, would recommend. So budget has tends to be kind of a wide range. So I'm going to say let's keep it under $100. Brandon, I think you recommended a $70 one earlier. Could you just remind us again what yep. that is? It is the Fifine K688. Um, they also have another one called the AM8, which is $50. Exact same sensor. It's just a plastic body. A little bit different of a look. All right, and Faye and Judy, what about you guys? What, if, what about which mic are y'all recommending for under $100? I'm going to be a little lazy. I'm going to recommend what Brandon's recommending because I realize how old school I've been since 2014. that I don't really know a lot of the new mics that are coming out, and I love what Brandon's recommending. Mm -hmm. All right, Judy, and what I about you? I lean towards like I don't teach like people how to kind of like present in studio settings. It's more like out and about and, you know, like like presenting to camera and stuff. So I'd always go the Rode Smart Love. It's like 50 quid and it's just a great mic to just like, you know, it's a it's it's a workhorse. And I, I've had the same ones for, I'd say, six years and they go in my handbag and I stand on them and they get destroyed and they, they somehow always work. So I, I think that they're just a really nice piece of kit. But if you are buying them buy the extension cable as well, it's about another 15 euro because the way that they've designed them they, it's just you might as well just be holding the phone up um because you can't hide the cable so you do need the extension and then the extension is about two miles long so you will actually nice. spend the majority of your life unraveling that <laughs> unraveling it again but it is it is a great piece of no kitchen, yeah. that's actually kind of funny um let me see if it's within i actually just bought this like 20 dollar lav mic to try it we saw it recommended on luria uh, live streaming pros channel it's only it's a $20 one, it's from Amazon, but look at how long the cord is. Like, there's oh, yeah. all, all this. I mean, and I already have mm. this this much of, of the cable, so, so I'm looking is forward to the, run, running this all the way across into the other room. <laughs> is that the Boya M120? It is oh, so yes, good, let me just tell is. you. it is, all right. If I could use that, but cut the cord in like three feet instead of 20, yeah. Wow. Well, it's good and, to hear uh, a cosine on that. I see a question, uh, uh, Julie from Dancing Brave. I am actually using a audio um, uh, interface, so Focusrite, super old school. So that's what I'm using on to answer that question. But I also want to add a question. It's okay with e uh, with you, of Eden. Of course, go uh, ahead. Yeah. Look at that. The, that's a mini one. I have a huge one. I don't know why I got that one. Super fancy. But I literally recently discovered these mics. These are the mini lavalier mics. Uh, it, I think it's so magical. So it comes with a little pin. Literally, this is the size of the thing. And when I was backstage at uh, Cirque du Soleil, I would just clip one on me, this on uh, the other person, and then the connector, without worrying about losing my Go mic or you know all these connectors, this tiny thing. I gotta I gotta show you. This is like this tiny thing plugs right into my phone, just like this, right? And then I'm good to go and I'm able to use my phone and capture the sound and, uh, you know, maybe the sound isn't super high quality. So we're just wondering if you guys have seen these, have used them, if you like them. Oh, God. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I streamed all of TwitchCon last year with these. Um, this is $20. Same thing. Love them. Oh, wow. What brand is that, uh, Brandon? Oh, um, I don't think it has a brand because <laughs> it, it probably is named brand by a whole bunch of different people. Um, but it's it's the same thing as what you have. It's the receiver plugs in. I just have the iPhone version, so and it plugs in. It's got two labs that come with it, and it wow. automatically connects. Wait, Brandon, do you do you have a video on that one on your on your um, channel? No, because I don't okay. usually cover uh, like. Okay. It, I'm not usually into Judy's world necessarily. I'm in this kind of world, but this is this is something that if I was in Judy, if you were trying to find something that's really cheap, a lav mic like the Rode Wireless goes, these are like twenty bucks. Just look it up. Wow. Um, they're really good. Amazing. Yeah. That's so good to hear, and it really just removes. I I, I just want to highlight that because so many of us are on the road creating content. You never know what kind of environment you're in. You lose your equipment regularly. It's really sad. And uh, sometimes you have to figure this on the go. But I think like, what if you have uh, literally just a phone and two, maybe more mics, and that's all you can work with? What what can you do? I'm, I find that world to be so fascinating, like the MVP version of out there being a journalist. Yeah, totally. Absolutely. And hey, do you edit on your phone as well? <clears throat> oh, yeah. I, you know, I used to bring my GoPro and camera. And by the time you, you set everything up, 
you're done the whole yeah. interview sometimes we're told to interview for no more than five minutes and we have less than a minute to set up i remember the documentary days we'll be showing up two hours at the on location right we just never had that so i actually learned uh from like TikTok and youtube videos to buy these this is a ulanzi right like the the little rig and with a little light and, and it's just fantastic it's like who invented these things? You put it in your purse and you're you're good. Yeah. Times have changed America, so much. If you're in America, you can get a Bowens kit, just like the Alonzi, for $30 at Walmart in the electronics section with the light, a condenser mic on top, the clip. I did recover that. I did do a review on that. But yes, nice. you can get that for 30 bucks from Walmart. From on, on If you're on our side of the pond, at least. So yeah, to answer Dancing Brave's question, is there anything Brandon doesn't have? No, <laughs> he has tried all the things. <laughs> oh, well, um, yeah, I, I just feel like I've learned so much from this panel. I know we're a little bit over on time. I do just want to add a couple of more comments that we've gotten from our friends. Richard Broom says that he bought a pair of Behringer C22 Studio Condenser Headphones and that, um, that he feels like it's a great buy considering the price. Um, and then also Victor mentioned earlier that not every platform or software works the same. So it does kind of just depend. I just wanna use this point to remind everyone, this is why we do sound checks. This is why we do tech check ahead of time. You always just give yourself those extra 15 minutes to test audio, make sure you're not getting slapped back. Um, Doc would kill me if I called it echo because that's not what it is. It's slap back. Um, so always do tech checks. And I think with that, we have gotten to most of the questions that we were that were submitted. I've learned a lot. Thank you all so much for sharing your expertise. Um, I will probably be reaching out to you guys when it is time for me to purchase my on the go travel kit and what I'm deciding on which mic to use. But yeah, thank you guys all so much. Everyone check out Brandon's mic review videos for comparisons when you're mic shopping. He's really done. He really does a great job. And Faye and Judy are here for your consultation and, and video needs. If you want to do a live event, produce a Zoom webinar, all of the above. Um, these are these are our, my panel of experts. So thank you, everyone, for joining Camel Classroom. And we will see you guys next time.